Never Stop Learning, week 293. We're gonna take a quick look at 3D text extrusion basics in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. All right, so 3D in Photoshop is a huge topic. There's a ton of information to cover, but in this video, I'm just gonna go over the basics. I wanna show you guys how to lay out some text, move your camera view around, move the text around, play around with the extrusion, and then just go ahead and render it out. All right, so I'm gonna get started by hitting the T key on my keyboard. That's gonna activate the type tool. I'm gonna click once in my document and then just lay out some basic text. I'm gonna go with OTC, which is the name of my Twitch channel, but I basically just wanted um, three simple letters to play with. All right, so now I've got my text laid out over here on the right in the layers panel. I just wanna confirm that I have the correct layer targeted because next I'm gonna come over here to the top where it says 3D and choose this option here new 3D extrusion from selected layer. When I click on that, Photoshop's gonna give me a little warning here. It says, you are about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch to the 3D workspace? So what's happening is currently I'm using the Essentials workspace, but because I'm creating a 3D layer, Photoshop wants to switch over to the 3D workspace, which is actually gonna help me out. All right, so you could tell it to don't show again. I'm gonna leave that unchecked. And then I'm gonna click yes. When I do that, it changes things. Over here on the right, I've got some different panels up. Over on the left, I have some different controls and views. And then check this out, we have our 3D extrusion right here in the center. Now, one of the first things that caused my attention is we have this grid going on along here, and then we have these arrows. Now, these arrows are actually the 3D widget, and I'm gonna be covering that in a separate video because there's a lot of little pieces to it. All right, but this grid here, this is actually the ground plane. So imagine we're actually underground looking up at our 3D object. So how do we play around with that? All right, I'm gonna move my cursor away from the 3D object. And just click right here. Notice we get this yellow box around the document. Again, away from the 3D object, I'm gonna click and drag. And that starts to change the view for me. All right, so here I'm below, now I'm above. I could get a bird's eye view. I could look at it from behind, whatever. Just play around, get the exact scene you're going for. All right, I'm gonna leave it set right there. All right, so now how do I twist around my text? All right, so I'm gonna click on it once, and that's gonna target my text. Now away from the 3D object, I'm gonna click and drag. That's gonna allow me to start spinning this guy around. Wherever I move my cursor, the text is trying to follow it along. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna undo that. Now, the way you go back and forth, just to kind of make sure you guys get that, is I wanna move this, the, the scene or my current view. So I'm gonna click away from my 3D object, I get this yellow box, now I could click and drag to reposition that. All right, if I wanna play around with the 3D object, click on that once, move away, and then click and drag to reposition it. All right, so that's pretty easy. Now, instead of playing around here in the document, you could also do the same thing over here in the 3D panel. Now over here we have OTC highlighted and then it shows the front inflation material, basically all the materials. So I'm gonna actually close those guys. It's kind of like closing the drawer. I'm just tucking those guys away. And it's gonna keep things nice and organized for me. All right, if I come back over here, choose current view. Now we have that yellow box around here and we could change the view. All right, if I come back into the panel, choose OTC. That gets highlighted, and then I can start repositioning my text. All right, now this last guy, you might notice this one, default camera. That one's pretty important. If you kind of get lost and make, make a mess of things, click on default camera, and it'll bring you right back to your starting point with the yellow box around your document, which is gonna allow you to reposition your view. All right, that's pretty cool. Now let's start playing around with this text. I'm gonna click on it once to highlight it, and then all kind of stuff starts happening in here. Like I said earlier, this widget here, I'm gonna cover that in a separate video, but I do wanna talk about these highlights because these are pretty easy to use. All right, if I hover over the face of my 3D object, then I get a highlight that goes along the face of my 3D object and some helper text is there. The helper text is saying it's gonna move along the Z axis. So if I click and drag, I could push it off into the distance or I could pull it closer towards me. All right, now, I have the highlight in the front, but if I move my cursor over here to the right, 
you see I have the highlight on the right side of my object. Now it's kind of hard to see there, but you also see that helper text that says it's going to move on the x-axis. So I'm going to click and drag to pull it towards the right, or I could push it off to the left that way. All right, so here I'm just kind of repositioning this guy. So think of these highlights as handles. If I come over here to one of these corners, I'm able to rotate. So I'm going to click and drag. It's just an area for me to grab and just kind of reposition this guy. Just push and pull, bring them around however you want. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, over here in the properties on the right, over here at the top, it's showing us that we're currently working with the mesh. So you want to click on that so you can see these features. There's a little T in there because we're working with live text currently. All right, now there's a bunch of features in here, but I'm going to skip down to extrusion depth. You can use this slider to click and drag towards the right, and that's going to extrude it off into the distance. If I go towards the left, it's going to extrude it towards us. All right, so we're actually stretching out our text here. All right, you could also enter in a specific value right in here if you need uh, some precision to happen. All right, cool. Next, down over here, you play around with your text. You have your character panel if you want to switch fonts, but I'm going to ignore that and come over here to the text. If I click on this color swatch, it's going to bring up the color picker for me and I can change colors. So instead of a boring gray, I'm going to go with a yellow, something with a little bit less green. All right, here we go. Choose this guy. And then over here at the top, you have your different exposures you can play with. But that one looks good to me, so I'm going to click OK. And now we got a color change. That's pretty cool. And then down here at the bottom, we have this big button for edit source. Now the source it's talking about is what we started off with, which was our live text. So I'm going to click on that and notice it opens up pretty much a new document. It has a PSB document here. All right. So in here, we could change the text. Instead of OTC, I'm going to go with SB for Sebastian Bleak. Accept that change. Now when I close this tab, Photoshop wants to know, do you want to save this or not? What's happening? Over here on the left, it says don't save. If I click on don't save, we just go back to our 3D document with no changes. If I click cancel, I stay inside this PSB and I can continue to edit this text. I'm going to hit save and that's actually going to update my 3D object. All right, so that's really cool in case your client says they want to change things up or maybe you misspelled something. All right, back in the properties panel, I'm going to click on edit source, go back to OTC. Accept that change and say save. All right, great. Now we're back to OTC. Okay. Now that's how you play around with the text and stuff like that. But if you notice, we're missing some of the 3D things that we had earlier. I don't see the ground plane. I don't see the, the view over here on the top left or those controls on the bottom left. Now, if you want to bring those guys back, jump into your tools panel and choose the move tool. The move tool is also kind of like a 3D helper. All right, so now we got our ground plane back. Everything looks normal. Over here in the properties panel, instead of working with mesh, I'm going to jump over to this guy here, deform. This is where stuff gets fun. All right, now you have these sliders over here in the properties panel that you can play around with on the right. But I want to show you guys the uh, heads up display here. They have the same controls as the properties, and I'll jump back and forth. But right here in the center of this heads up display, we could play around with the extrusion, and that's what those arrows are for. Just click and drag. Now I'm going to extrude it off into the distance. If I go the opposite direction, now it's extruding towards me. All right, so there we go. For the extrusion in the properties, you see it right here, extrusion depth. It's the same slider we were playing around with earlier, or you could enter in a specific value right in here. All right, back to this heads up display. I'm starting from the center, working my way out. So the next thing we have here are these tapered lines. These tapered lines are going to take care of the tapering for our extrusion. So I'm going to click on that and drag. As I drag, we start to taper out. And then we start to bring the taper back in a little bit. See? There you go. So play around with your tapering right in here. You can also control that in the properties panel. Skip twist, and it's right here, taper. You got your slider, or you could enter in a specific value right here. All right, back to the heads up display. So we went from extrusion to taper. The next thing, this almost looks like some orange slices, but you see they have this bend around there because it's going to take care of the bend for your extrusion. All right, I'm going to back off on this taper just a little bit before I do that. Okay, cool. For bend, I'm going to click and drag because I really like this one. 
If I go up, it follows my cursor. It just comes around everywhere. Here, it's looking at you from the right side. I'll go back down around here. Come back, looking at you from the left side. It's just really cool. I, I like playing around with this. I like how it looks. Wherever I move my cursor, that's where my 3D extrusion goes. I love that. Now, you can compare that to working with it in the properties panel. Here, again, it's going to be more about precision. You have two separate sliders. This one's going to control your horizontal. All right. And then we have the vertical right over here. All right. I love how this moves around. It just looks really cool how it does that. All right. Next, we played around with the bend. Leave that guy there. The last one we have is twist, and that's the ring that's around the entire heads up display. I'm going to click and drag going clockwise, and it spins it around for me. I could also go counterclockwise, and it'll go in the opposite direction. So this is where things get really fun, guys. Play around with this heads up display, and you get some really interesting 3D effects. Just don't go too crazy. All right, so let me bring out the tapering just a little bit. All right, let's say that this is exactly what we want here, but I actually want to start playing around with the position of them. I don't like that um, the T and the O and the C are just lined up perfectly. I want to break these guys apart so I can manipulate them individually. All right, so once you get to that point, once you have every uh, the text laid out how you want, everything spelled correctly, you jump back over here to the top where it says 3D, and then you want to choose this option here, Split Extrusion. When you click on that, Photoshop gives you a warning again. This one's really important. It says, when using split extrusion, the selected object's animation or text editability will be lost. Scene level animation will remain intact. So for us, this text portion is really important. By clicking OK, we're saying we're not going to go back and edit that text anymore. We're pretty much just stuck with 3D objects. All right, but check this out. I'm going to click on one. Over here at the top, we don't have that T anymore because it's not live text, but we're still dealing with the mesh, so everything's pretty much how we remember it. Here I have the O activated. I'm just going to bring this guy forward using that little highlight. Here we go. Or push it back. Whatever you want. I'm going to leave it a little bit forward. Great. This guy right here, I'm going to click on it to activate it. Let's see. I shouldn't have done a double click. Let me get out of there. I'll go back, click on it once, move on the axes like this. I actually want to bring this guy up. So, whoop, there we go. See, I have the highlight on the top of the box. So I'm able to push it down or bring it back up that way. I'll bring it up this way. Now I want to target the letter C. And I'm going to push it in a little bit so it tucks under the, uh, the T right there. And let's push this guy back. You can play around with this as much as you want to get the exact look you're going for. I just want to, you know, switch things up a little bit. All right, so now let's say that this is the exact look I'm going for. I'm ready to render this guy. What you do next is jump into the properties panel. Down at the bottom, next to the trash can, you have this icon for render. Click on that once, and it's going to start the rendering process for you. All right, so you see it's starting to bring things together. There's a little blue box just kind of scanning through, uh, bringing everything together for you. Now on the bottom left, we have this little sign, and it's saying, Render process can be found below. Click Escape key to cancel. So if you want to stop the rendering process, hit Escape. I'm going to click on this little warning here, or this little information box, and that's going to dismiss it for me. All right, cool. So now it's just going to go ahead and progress. This should take somewhere about, here, let me get rid of that again. Uh, this should take somewhere about uh, 12 minutes for something like this, but I'm not going to make you guys watch it. I'm going to hit Escape. All right and then switch over to this document here. So this is pretty much a rendered out version of what I was playing around with here. There's still some changes I like to make with it, like um, the letter T is not sitting on the ground exactly, and then I'm not too crazy about the C, uh, the shadow being on the C there. But uh, I want to run the entire rendering process there so you can see how clean um, your result's going to be. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at 3D Text Extrusion Basics in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017.